Psalms chapter 50. We're going to look at two classes of men here. Those that are right with God and those that are not right. The mighty God. <clears throat> Even the Lord that's spoken. That has spoken. And called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the glory down thereof. Daytime. Out of Zion. The perfection of beauty would be the Lord Jesus Christ. God has shined. Jerusalem is the beauty of God. Ain't that much beautiful today. It's in ruin. Wait till Jesus Christ sits there. Our God shall come. Second Advent. And shall not keep silent. A fire shall dwell before him. Revelation 19. And it shall be very tumultuous round about him. Man, when Jesus comes, there's just going to be death all around him. Remember, many and the few sheep nations. It's going to be some sight to see. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people, the Jewish people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. That's the Jew. They have a sacrifice. That's not the church, because the church doesn't have a sacrifice. The church sacrifices Jesus Christ on the cross. What do we sacrifice? If that was a sacrifice to be works, the Bible says not of works, please any man both. Got to be careful how you read your Bible. In the heavens, plural, shall declare his righteousness, that's Jesus. For God is judge himself, Jesus, Selah, second advent passage. Hear, O my people, Jewish, and I will speak, O Israel, see? I will testify against thee, like a courtroom. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you guys. I'm going to spell it out. I am God. I am. I am. Even thy God. Have every God you have, the God of Israel. You got the God of Ishmael, you ain't got the right God. You got the God of the Italians, you're not the right God. You got the God of Americans, you don't have the right God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. The offerings that they brought in the tri tribulation period. I, God, will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats of thy fold. For every beast of the field that forest is mine, and a cattle upon a thousand hills, the most, one of those favorite uh, passages in the Bible. I know all the fowls in the mountain. Jesus said God tends the funeral of all the sparrows. He knows how much they, they, they charge for them. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, God speaking, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine, the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Talk about sacrifices. It's all about the sacrifices. Instead of the sacrifices, this is what God wants. Offer unto God thanksgiving. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. That's interesting. Jacob's trouble. And I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. God says, go ahead, offer all those offerings. I don't want them. Can you imagine all the offerings that were, were going out about when Jesus lived the, 30, the 33 and a half years? We know Mary brought the, the two pigeons. So we know there were animal sacrifices. We know Jesus went in the temple and he made the, the score of, of the whips of the robe and he was casting all the birds and all the animals. We know they were offering animals. Did God care? Did God care when they took the Lamb of God and crucified him on the cross and in the book of Acts? Absolutely not. 
in the book of Acts, they're going back, even though the, the, the veil has been ripped in two. They have gone back and still offering sacrifices of the animal. God's I don't care. They can't offer sacrifices today. Today they partake of the Passover. When the law says you're not to do the Passover in all thy gates, you're supposed to come to Jerusalem. They're in violation of law right now. God doesn't care. In the tribulation period, the temple's there. They're going to come and bring their offerings. God doesn't care. Leave your animals home, he says. I want you to believe on Jesus Christ, your Messiah, whom you rejected. And I believe that when Jesus comes, there will be Jews that will not survive the second advent, while there will be Jews that will survive. I believe there will be Jews that will take the mark and go with the devil. As there will be Gentiles who would help the Jew and be those sheep nations. But God said, listen, think, I, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you at all. I want you to thank me. I want you, in your time of trouble, I want you to call upon me. And there are going to be people in the tribulation period, Jews and Gentiles, when it comes to, oh, I need my baby to get medical care. I need to get some food. I need something. They're going to run to the devil and get that 666. They're not going to run to God. And those animals, hey, you want to bring that sacrifice to the temple? There'll be Jews that are going to take the mark to, bring, to get that animal and bring that animal with their mark to the temple. God's like, I don't want it. There'll be Jews coming to the temple with the mark of the bee. And, and God's like, don't even bother. Don't even bother. You've already signed in with the devil. And don't say it will happen because all through Jeremiah, all through the kings, and all through judge, they were sacrificing to the devil, not to God. But God says, I want you to give me thanksgiving. I want you to pay your vows to the most. And I want you to call upon me and I'll deliver you, deliver you out when Jesus comes. And there'll be some that'll get beheaded in the tribulation period and they end up in heaven before the throne of God. All right, verse 16, the other side of the coin. But to the wicked, God saith. And that wicked would also be the Antichrist. What hast thou to do to declare my statue? For that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Somebody's eating the sacrifices that's wicked. Eli's sons were doing that. The people were bringing their offerings to the temple, and it wasn't even boiled yet, and they're, they're sticking the fork in there, and they're grabbing the raw meat and eating it. Saul had offered an offering of the priest that he wasn't supposed to. So what we see going on has happened in the in the past of the history of the Jews has happened presently by Asaph, and it's going to happen in the tribulation period. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Seeing thou hatest instruction. God has performed in the law what they're supposed to do, and they don't care what the law says. You don't believe me? Look at the Pharisees. Look at the scribes at Jesus' time. Your disciples are rubbing wheat together and eat the wheat. And how bad is that? And how bad is it for you to get false witnesses to murder Jesus? What, what, what's the problem here? I mean, you, you swallow down a camel, you, you stay in a gnat. Jesus, how dare you, you know, you, you, you heal the people on the Sabbath day. And you reject God's son who is God. What's the problem? And cast is my words behind it. All right, they hate instruction. Where is the instruction? It's in the law. What are they doing with the law of Moses? They're throwing it away. 
in the time of Asap and in the future. And as we read through the, I mean, like I said, Eli's sons, they don't care what the law said. You're not supposed to eat it raw. They don't care. They were having orgies at the at the at the veil of the of the tabernacle. And Eli their father didn't care for nothing. And God told Eli, You care about your sons more, you care about me. So you're gonna lose them all. And you're gonna die. That's what churches are today. They don't care what God says in the scriptures, and they take the word of God and they change it. Or now they don't even have the word of God. When thou sawest a thief, then thou considerest with him. They look at the thief. Ooh, how'd you do that? Let me learn to be. Listen, that's what they do in jail. I've been in jail ministry. Thieves will teach other thieves on how to be a thief or er. That's a word. They will get a group of people and say, well, how would you do to get in here? Well, I got caught by the police. They will tell that person how not to get caught by the police. Up in Connecticut, I remember there was a story about a woman. She'd been arrested for four or five times. Bank robbery. And she got away with it more and more and more time, each and every time. And they finally asked her, the, the fifth time they arrested well, how are you getting away with it? I just learned, I talked to more people in jail. And I learned how to do better. And when you go, when you send me back to jail, I'm going to study it more. And then when I come out, I'm going to do it again. I'll be even longer before you catch me. That's called the evil good. And hast thou partaken with adulteries? Oh, adulterers? Yeah, that's all going on. Eli's sons again were partaking of having sex with the women at the temple. I guarantee it was happening during Jesus. Listen, the men came and said, Jesus, we caught this woman in adultery. In the very act. In order to catch her in the very act, that means one of them, or maybe a few of them, had to have been having sex with her. In order to be adulterer, somebody had to be married. And doing adultery themselves. You find Malachi when when they, when they're chiving the priest. That's what they're doing, adultery. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Ooh, that's not the pulpits in America today and all around the world. That's that's the mouth of the Antichrist. I forget which Thessalonians, one or two, where he talks about the Antichrist. Got a great mouth of speaking great blasphemy against the holy and righteous God. And thy tongue frameth deceit. Listen, Jesus told them, when it comes to honor thy father and mother, they're like, well, you know, if you take your money and give it to us, we'll lay, we'll lay it up in an IRA. When it comes time to take care of your parents, you ain't got no money to take care of. And when they die, then for, for a price, we'll give you your money back. And then you'll be free of taking care of your, your parents. That's deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, fellow Jew. It's all about the Jew. Thou slanderest, liar, Thy own mother's son. Family. So that brother is not only a fellow Jew, but also blood brother. These things hast thou done. And I kept sweat. God says, I, I didn't say a word. All through the book of my, they're doing things, God's like, I'll send them a prophet. I won't send them nobody. You realize that God has not sent them a prophet of God, spoken by God, since the book of Acts. Now he sends to them Christian with the gospel. 
The Bible is finished. It's, it, there's no other further revelations of the scriptures but the King James 66, uh, 66 books of the Bible. God has not said to the Jewish people, hey, here's his angel sitting on these palm trees saying, come here, I want to talk to you guys. God has not sent a prophet in the nation. Hey, I want you to go over here, go go to this woman over here. You know, she's at the well, and you know, I want you to go take care of her. Those prophets are not coming back to the tribulation period, and that's Moses and Elijah. And Israel today is committing all kinds of, of sins against the law that they're supposed to be doing. And God's like, well, I'm going to tell you one thing. What's that, Father? Jesus, when you call your son, when you call your bride away, yes, Father. Ooh, they're going to get in trouble. Yes, Father. They're going to be in trouble. You know, I'm going. To, you know, I'm going to tell Jeremiah what to call it. I know, Father. Jacob's trouble. They want. A, a, they want a false god. They want the devil. I'll give them the devil. I'll give them the false god. I'll give them seven years. That, that's not bad enough. Three and a half years, I'll give him the devil. Three and a half years, I'll give him great tribulation. And then, son, you go down and go get him. And we'll settle him then. We'll give him a new heart and a new spirit and forever to worship me. And you got the church today with deceit and love. God's all finished with the Jews. By gum, you claim the, pro the prophecies. You claim the scriptures of the Old Testament tithing for the church. Where Paul said to the church, give cheerfully. Don't give of the necessary. Don't give because you have to give. Give because you want to give. You must, you know, their church, they're a Gentile church. You must, you must serve the Lord on Saturday. The Bible says the first day of the week. Saturday is not the first day of the week. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. You thought, you know what you thought me as a God was? I was a sinner. You thought I was an adulterer, and you thought I was a thief, just like you are. No, that's the gods they pick. That's going shopping for God. That's not the holy and righteous God of the Bible. Now, you may have a Catholic God because you want a Catholic God, but God the Father is not Catholic. You may have a Baptist God that you got on the shelf of aisle 7 at the, at the grocery store, but God, the holy, righteous God of the Jews, is not a Baptist God. He ain't going to build you a log cabin and have your coon dogs with your, your hunting rifles in glory. You want a bapt you want a baptism God? That's not the holy righteous God. There are people out there that they have manufactured gods, and the devil has given them gods to what they want, and they believe what their gods they're serving today. Oh, that's what God is. You see, my God, if I if I kneel and bend my legs and I reach, I say, that's my God. And they'll tell you that oh, I'm reaching out to God, the inner name. And all the angels in heaven like, ain't the God we've been working. Ain't the God that created us. I mean, when they say they're good, they got a good God. A good God that will allow their sin. And, oh, bad to you doing your sin. You see, I can relish him and my drinking and my smoking. But how dare you preach the gospel? That's not a good God. That's not what God would do. They threw the word of God out because you know what? That's exactly what Jesus did for three and a half years. You know what Jesus had the nerve to do? Uh, you know, preach in the street. That's not what Jesus Jesus had the nerve to go into their church building, the temple, and preach to them there. Some nerve. The Bible says Jesus sat over there by the treasury and taught the people. What was the treasury? That's where the temple was. He was stealing the Sunday school class from the pastors. Or, or, you know, the, the, the Pharisees, the scribes. And the, what would you to do today? What would happen if you walked into a church, any church, 
and you grabbed the people out, you met in the back room. What were we doing? Oh, oh, how dare you teach them the truth? That's exactly what Jesus did. And you had the same attitude that the Pharisees and scribes did that if somebody were to go teach your people the truth. I know, we had it happen. We had it happen Christmas Eve, 2019. We went out there trying to get the people the truth. Oh, oh give us that thing. They're not a representative of our church. I know we're not. Oh, they're, they're, throw this, and they had a garbage can throwing the tracks in the garbage. We were bringing them the gospel truth, and boy, did they get upset. We did exactly what Jesus did. We went to there. We didn't go inside, but we went on the sidewalk and we brought them the truth. And boy, the scribes and the Pharisees. The guy told me, I said, listen, I said, you know what you are? I said, you're a Pharisee and a scribe. The guy said, thank you very much. I tried talking to him. I tried telling him about the true Jesus. I tried quoting the scriptures to him about what the Bible says about the, He didn't care because they threw the word of God out and brought the tradition in. I know what I'm talking about. I've witnessed it. But I will reprove thee. I mean, I'm going to, this is, boy, you are bad. And not only are you bad, let me tell you what you did to be wrong. You know, when you discipline a child before you spank them, you can tell that child, this is exactly why you get spanked. This is your crime. When a judge is on his, his bench and you're standing there as the defendant, he says, listen, okay, the charges are X. B, Y, C, F. These are your charges. You're going to jail this long for X. You're going to jail for this long for Y. You're going to pay this amount for C. And that's what God's going to do to him. Adultery. Lying. And he reproves the priest in the book of Malachi. <laughs> Jeremiah reproves the people. Ezekiel reproved the people. Moses forever reproved the people. You know, if, if, if I was Joshua and, and Moses like, God told me to, to you know, to uh, ordain you for, no. I'm surprised Joshua took that job. After all, I mean, Joshua was Moses' right-hand man. I mean, like, as well as they treated you? Ooh. You know what Moses closed his word with the Jewish people before he died? I know you're stiff-necked people, and I know you're going to go the way of, 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 of the false gods, and I know you're going to walk away from God. Jer I mean, Jeremiah. Uh, Joshua, they're yours. Whoa. God reproved uh, through Moses, Aaron. Imagine Aaron. Well, I threw it in the, the, the earrings, and out came this calf. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, you know what you did? What did I do? You made them naked. You made them sin. That's what's going to happen in the Great White Throne Judgment. The books were open. And they were judged by their work. Okay, you gave money to this organization. That sounds so good. And how many times did you send your spouse off crying and upset? How many times did you take money out of your children's mouth and did X, Y, Z? Oh, you were a good employee. You, you you helped your company get. Oh, that's very good. And what about those candy bars you put in your pocket in, in a grocery store? Oh, you were very. You went to church. Wow. And how many empty offering envelopes did you put in the pot, making people think you put money in there? There are people take. Offering envelopes, they put it in, in the plate or whatever, and they're empty. But look, used car salesman makes a Look, at, he put an envelope in there. He must get, wow, he must give a lot of money because he makes good money over there. God will tell you how often you served him and how often you served the world. God will tell you how well you did with Jesus and how well you did for yourself. And set them in order before thy eyes. Oh, man. He may, I, I don't know. Said the books were open. Imagine the great way, I mean, on the video, I mean, the audio won't be able to, but the video, again. imagine God saying open the book. See this? 
February 5th at 3 o'clock in 2019. You, you want to read that for me? You know, sometimes we do evangelistic work. We do, we'll open the Bible and say, read that verse. Read it. All right, see right there? March 7th, 2018. Read that, buddy. Oh, you want to talk about, oh, oh, you were good. Let's turn to page uh, 103. Let's list the places where you were evil. Wait a minute. Oh, look at that. It's evil. That's five pages worth. See that? That's five pages of you. And you told my preacher you were good? Let's start naming off the evil. You thought the guy was a dimwit. You wish he was dead. I'm talking about the preacher. You. I sent to you, the, the missionary, the evangelist. He saw he was out of his mind. You wanted to irritate, you wanted to trip him. You wanted to make sure he, he couldn't have his word, which is my word, be preached to the people. Really? Paul, come here. Yes, sir. You want to tell these people what I said to you when you were persecuting the church? He said, Lord, why persecute thou me? Thank you, sir. All those things you said about that man I sent there to save your soul, why'd you do it against me? Jesus speaking. That guy you fumbled at work, that, that guy, you know, you, you put those dirty pictures on his desk so he had to look at him, you did that to me. You imagine Jesus calling up all those false witnesses that the Pharisees and scribes got to testify against Jesus? I want to make up some names, but you know, I'm gonna, you know, Lucas, you said I did this. I didn't do that. How about when he's standing before the Sanhedrin and they put a, a shroud over his head and they're punching the daylight? So come on, tell us who did it, Jesus. Okay, great white throne judgment. Abraham, I don't mean Abraham, the father. I'm talking about a Jew named Abraham punching Jesus in the face. Abraham, you did it. You did it number seven times. You did it number nine times. And you're the one that said, all right, who did it? And by the way, you stepped on my foot. Man, I wouldn't want to be at that great white throne judgment when the books are open. Listen, at the, at the Christian judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, it's wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, precious stone. Is that great white throne judgment? Time is gone. There's no more time. We got all the time in the world to go through everybody and their sins. Is the book's over? Yeah, you went to church? Okay. Uh, let's see. Church night, Sunday night, uh, January 32nd. January 30th. You were wondering how quick this message is going to get over so you can go home. You wish the preacher would just shut up and end his message. You were wondering how the ball game was doing. You were wondering how this, how this, your wife would stand to have you come to the place like this. Better realize. Now consider this. Oh, after what I just said, now consider this. Consider what I just said to you. Now consider this. Ye that forget God. Ooh. you imagine forgetting God and there you are standing before him and the Bible says prepare the meat thy God oh, oh I forgot about you least I tear you in pieces Ooh. that's the God of love by the way so God hates the sin and loves the sinner. So let me read that verse according to that nonsense saying. God shall tear your sins in peace. No. You, the sinner. And there be none to deliver. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Whoso offers praise glorifies me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, 
All right, this is in this last verse is to say to the one that loves God and gives God the honor, gives God the glory, gives God the praise, has obeyed God. God says, will I show the salvation of God and to the wicked depart from me, work of iniquity. And to those that done right, well done, come thou to the peace and rest. 